Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome, welcome to part three. As I always say, if you haven't listened to the other parts, feel free to go back and revisit just so I can get right on with the proceedings and I'm not repeating myself. Okay, another thing, another way rather, that speaking can really help you is to help you to elevate. And as I'm saying elevate, I am lifting my arms up into the air and I am taking them out to the side, I'm sticking my chest out, I am looking up to the ceiling, because that's what elevate means to me. It's much more of a state of expansion rather than I'm going to elevate and be right at the top and looking down at people. It's more of that sense of elevation, of stretch, of expansion, rather than being small and constricted and contracted. It really has that time and space and new energy. This has been really interesting, noticing how I show up and how my ability to speak has helped me to show up. I've really understood the importance of people's time. And this is what I mean. When, myself included, when I listen to other people's podcasts, when I watch a a webinar, when I go to the theatre, when I um, am an art gallery or whatever it might be, when I'm in the presence of somebody who has said, I can show you, teach you, educate you, entertain you. I am ready. I want to see that person in the best, most vibrant, fullest, beautiful self. And that's not necessarily uh, the shiny, polished version, but I want them to go all in. So sometimes that means me hearing somebody on a podcast sharing something that perhaps has been uncomfortable or they learnt a very important lesson, something that takes them out of their comfort zone, where they share the truth. Because what I am seeking is that connection, connection to the work. I want it to matter. And so when I'm thinking about podcasts and content that I share... I really want it to matter. Now, that might sound conceited. It might sound like, all right, Nikki, it's just an Instagram post. Come on now. But I really appreciate people's time and effort at looking at something. And I think sometimes there can be a tendency to do something really fast and furious because we have the technology, we have the ability to do that. We have the ability to do quantity rather than quality. And this is a really interesting point in terms of your business, is that do you have the capacity? Do you have the energy? Do you have the purpose? Do you have the objective to really show up and be who you are in the world? So to come back to my original point about Elevate, I now know that what's got me here is not going to get me where I want to go. And knowing that means that I have to make some different decisions. I'm not somebody who can just coast or assume that I know everything. Sometimes we find that with industries or people that we come into contact with me. And sometimes I have that sense of like, ah, this person, this information, this vibe is not fresh. It's not current. It's not up to date. It feels a bit stuck. It might feel a bit stuffy. It might feel like it needs shaking up a little bit. And for me, I always want to be sharp and meaningful and purposeful with that. Another thing that I notice a lot is that people can say, lots of things without saying anything. Lots of, well, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, la, 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 la. And what people are looking for is, and maybe this is how I imagine it, is if somebody's listening to my podcast, I imagine that they are looking at their watch 
or thinking about the messages that they want to reply to on WhatsApp or something else that they could be watching or doing. So when I'm talking to you right now, I want you to stay with me. I want you to be in this conversation with me. I want you to have that momentum going through your life and your business as I'm talking, going, all right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And one of the things that can happen is that we can appear that we are not ready for the opportunity. So this process of elevation starts with perhaps us thinking about our goals. So maybe in terms of speaking or communicating, this may be a very tangible goal for you where you say, I want to work with this company or I want to speak on this stage or I want to be on that particular podcast. Maybe it's I want to run a workshop or maybe I want to sell from the stage. Maybe I want to be on the this morning sofa, whatever it might be. It's likely that it will start with a thought, an image, a vision, a sense of, oh, I would love to do that. But in order to bridge that gap from where you are right now to where you want to get to, there's going to have to be some work. And I know that given the X Factor, given Britain's Got Talent, given all of these programs that we've all viewed over the years where people say, I just got an amazing opportunity or this is my dream. I'm looking for my lucky break. I've learned that now is not the time to wait for my lucky break. Now is my time to create it. And I urge you to do the same as well. So when I'm talking about Elevate, I may have those goals, those visions, those dreams, the wouldn't it be cool if type tasks or type uh, bucket list things that I might have on my list. And then I go into action. Then I go in to, so what do I need to do next? What are the actions that I need to do? And this is not just about like, right, I've just got to email them because that is just one way of doing it. And whenever I'm reaching for a big goal, whenever I'm in that elevation, that expansion mode, I'm looking at all parts of me. So first and foremost, it might be saying, what do I need to do strategically? Then I might say, what do I need to do physically? And physically might be, I need to go and take a walk because I really want to shake up my material. I really want to look at the way that I'm speaking and making sure that I'm not getting stuck in a rut or telling the same stories or repeating old ground. Maybe there is that sense as well of what you need to do creatively or commercially. So whenever I'm thinking about those big jumps, I often look to inspiration, like where do I need to go? What do I need to see? What do I need to experience to really be in that mindset? Then usually there's a piece of what do I need to do psychologically? What do I need to do mentally? What do I need to do spiritually? What do I need to do for my nervous system to get it to catch up, to know that they are going to be safe in this elevation? So the temptation, of course, is to say, right, I'm setting a big goal and I'm going for it and I'm going to go for it and I'm not going to stop until I get what I, I want. But there's going to have to be a little bit of a release, a little bit of softness within that to get you closer. Also, I know that when I'm on a path of elevation, I know that just sitting and going, one day, one day, I really want to do that. I'll keep telling people about that. One day, I'm thinking about it. I like to know that there are things that I can do and that potentially I can be in control of. So going back to those things such as what can I do physically, strategically, psychologically, creatively, curiously, what can I do to get myself, to move myself inch by inch, day by day to where it is that I want to get to. I also am paying attention to those people who perhaps I admire or that I feel inspired by or are doing what I want to do. And I pay close attention to them. And 
if I answer honestly, and I hope that this doesn't sound conceited because I don't feel like this all the time, but if I look at it on a very basic level, I guess from a conversation or just two people being in the room um, who are not in competition with each other, the number of times when I've connected perhaps with that person who I'm like, oh my goodness, wow, what, and I'm in awe of them, I can quickly, if I really think about it, get to a point where I might say, we have a lot of similarities, me and this person. I mean, if I'm thinking about Beyonce and I'm thinking about her vocal ability, I'm not going to go, gosh, we're really similar, actually. Beyonce is definitely um, winning at that one, that is for sure. But there might be other similarities. I imagine that Beyonce cooks some really nice food. I imagine she likes hosting her family in her home. I imagine she's a great mum. I imagine that she's really interesting to be in a board meeting with. And to me, when I start to break those processes down and look for those similarities, I get to a place where things start to become doable. And they start to become doable now. Like I can be on this path right now rather than waiting. I also think about that sense of imagine if I thought, if somebody thought I was just wasting their time. Or the worst thing, like if somebody listened to one of my talks, they were like, yeah, yeah, Nikki, I've heard it all before. Oh, tell me something I don't know. Oh, she always does this slide deck or she always does this thing. I want people to be in surprise in that element of like, oh, okay. Oh, she's bringing something different. And so again, what does that involve for me? That involves for me regularly reflecting, regularly looking at what I'm doing and asking some big questions. Why am I doing this? Does it connect? What did people say? How could I say this in a better part? Was I being completely truthful there? Not in a like lying situation, but is there something further, some further detail perhaps that I could go into there? I'm always in reflection mode. And I know so many people don't want to be in that mode because it involves us looking at ourselves. But I always want to do that. The next thing is, am I working on my own elevation? Am I stretching myself? Am I getting too comfy? And are there ways where I can continue moving forward? And if so, what does that look like? I know that you are likely to be having some nudges, some, hmm, oh, maybe it is time that I do X, Y, and Z starting to run through you. I want you to listen to those murmurs. I want you to consider them. And I want you to write down the things that have come up for you within this episode whilst I've been talking to you and take them seriously. Because those nudgets, nudgets, those nuggets, those nudges, those, ooh, maybe, they are planted within you already. And now it's time to just simply allow them to bloom and to let them come through. They're trying. They're really, really trying. So help them along. Do something with them. Play with them. Experiment with them. Make them feel more like you. If my conversation around speaking, communication, expanding, elevation has interested you. Please do book a call with me. Nikki, uh, you, oh sorry, nikkiraby.com forward slash speak up is the speaking link. Um, but you can email me hello at nikkiraby.com. That's N-I-C-K-Y-R-A-B-Y. And tell me what you want. Tell me where you're going next. Tell me what is sparking your interest. Because also it will be a two-sided coin that you will have that sense on one side of like, I'm doing this, I know what I'm doing, this is where I want to get to. But maybe on the other side, there is that shadow, that sense of, oh, I don't know, oh, I feel a bit scared about that. Oh, that feels a bit out of my comfort zone or I don't know how to do that. 
that is maybe something that I can help you with. So do book that free 15 minute session. Hello at NikkiRaby.com. I cannot wait to get started. I'll see you tomorrow. Sending lots of love. Rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in a bit.